Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this here old video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a lot of unsolved cold cases that either have been solved in 2019 or have some interesting updates. Now not all of the cases we have talked about on that chapter have updates, sadly. There are a lot of cases we've talked about that remain unsolved to this day, how many years later? And some of the ones we also talked about that we thought may have had leads going somewhere to some kind of resolution ended up going nowhere. But we'll talk about it. So, uh, let's. So, first of all, let's talk about Jamie Kloss. I made two videos about her. One about her abduction and the other about her rescue when she rescued herself. Uh, no, I don't want to take her over. Douglas County 911. Hi. I have um, a young lady at my house right now, and she just says her name is Jamie Kloss. She's doing pretty well after being held captive for 88 days in 2018. Jesus, that's a long time. She released a statement saying she was getting back into the activities she enjoyed and is working hard on healing. Last October, Jake Patterson took a lot of things that I love away from me. It makes me the most sad that he took away my mom and my dad. I felt safe in my home and I love my room and all of my belongings. He took all of that too. I don't want to even see my home or my stuff because of the memory of that night. But there are some things that Jake Patterson can never take from me. He can't take my freedom. He thought that he could own me, but he was wrong. I was smarter. I watched his routine and I took back my freedom. I will always have my freedom and he will not. She was only 13 years old when this happened and that's unbelievably horrific what she went to, so I'm glad to hear she's doing all right. The piece of shit who kidnapped her and murdered her parents in front of her was given two consecutive life sentences with no parole, and 40 years on top of that, the cherry on the top for kidnapping. It was an impulse crime, not planned. He didn't know the family at all, just saw Jamie one day. He pled guilty because he wanted to spare Jamie Kloss and her family the trauma of a trial. So he pled guilty because he didn't want to bring Jamie back into court, having to relive the trauma of witnessing her parents getting murdered in front of her, and then being held captive for 88 days. If only he had that kind of compassion before he did what he did, he could have saved everybody a lot of trouble. But he's gonna rot in prison for the rest of his life, so... Go the murders of Liberty German and Abigail Williams still sadly remain unsolved. An updated sketch of the suspected killer has been released. Also a video, but it just shows an extra few frames more than the already released image. So not a whole lot of new information in this unsolved case, but what this does tell us is that the police are very serious about continuing the investigation, finding the perpetrator of this atrocious crime. <laughs> A reward for information leading to an arrest stands at $225,000. Now Maura Murray. The last we know about her is that she vanished after crashing her car in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. Toward the end of my video on her case, we talked about how her father believed her remains may have been buried in the basement of a house near where she was last seen. In April 2019, that basement was dug up, and they found nothing. Extremely disappointing for the family. Dogs seemed to have been onto something in that basement. Uh, the radar seemed to indicate there was something there, but deadly squat. Investigators from the New Hampshire State Police and the FBI searched a home in Woodsville, New Hampshire. They were looking for evidence connected to the missing persons case of Maura Murray. I can tell you that no evidence was found in connection with that case. Still don't know what happened to Maura Murray. She just vanished. Either somebody got her, she wanted to start a new life, and she did, or she just wandered off into the wilderness and died there. Xavier Dupont, you son of a bitch. There was a lot of hubbub about him recently. 
It was thought he had finally been arrested in Glasgow Airport, eight years after killing his family and disappearing, going on the run as a secret agent. The flight was from Paris, and a man was held in police custody in connection with a European arrest warrant issued by the French authorities. Police in Scotland were tipped off by the French, who thought they saw him at the airport. And when this guy's fingerprints were taken, they matched Xavier's. But it turned out to be a case of mistaken identity after a DNA test came back negative. So who knows if Xavier Dupont de Ligon is still out there on the run, dead, or maybe he is a secret agent, who knows. Jerrica Binks was a woman who disappeared while running in Utah in 2018. After extensive searches, nothing about her was, uh, well, ever found. Until it was. She wasn't kidnapped, she wasn't attacked by a mountain lion, she just fell. In April 2019, a hiker came across skeletal remains in a ravine near her last known location, surrounded by her personal items. There were serious breaks in both bones in her lower leg. It seems that she, while jogging, went off the trail and fell, breaking her leg and perishing there. The place she was found, well, it's kind of understandable why she was never found. It was located halfway up a steep ravine, away from any trails or man-made structures. The person who found her even said he'd explored the area for years and had never been there. So the case of Jerrica Binks turned out to be just a pure, pure accident. The case of Valerie Reyes was an interesting one because literally as I published a video, the suspected killer was found. But I got a bit more. Valerie was found bound and inside a suitcase on the side of a road in Greenwich. She had passed from a lack of oxygen. It was her ex-boyfriend who did it, one Javier da Silva from Venezuela. When he was arrested, he said, get this, that Valerie fell to the floor and hit her head. And that's when he placed packing tape over her mouth, bound her legs and hands, and stuffed her body into a suitcase. As you do. Javier da Silva was charged with one count of kidnapping, resulting in death. If convicted, he faces death or life in prison. We'll just have to wait and see what he gets. Attorneys are working on a possible plea deal. The Bearbrook murders have been solved, kind of. Uh, we know the person behind it was Terry Rasmussen, Robert Evans, whatever name he enjoyed going by. But what we don't know is who the bodies in the barrels actually were. They remained unidentified until they were identified. Over the summer, three of them were given names. Marilise Elizabeth Honeychurch and her two daughters, Marie Elizabeth Vaughan and Sarah Lynn McWaters. The fourth victim found in the barrels, who is Terry Rasmussen's daughter, has still not been identified. Marilise Elizabeth Honeychurch was dating Terry at the time of her disappearance. Her and her two daughters were last seen at a family Thanksgiving dinner in 1978 in California. Apparently, uh, they stormed out of the house after an argument. How they ended up in Bear Brook from California, that remains unknown, but there's so much about the Bear Brook story that is gone to the grave with the people who knew what happened. So the Israel Keys story is over. Um, his last victim was himself. But there's one interesting tidbit I found. Maureen Callahan, who wrote a book about Israel, theorized that he may have essentially been biohacking his own body to become a supervillain before he was caught. <laughs> she gained access to his diary, in which he wrote on May 12, 2006, travel to surgery for an unspecified procedure in one of his journal entries. Nearly a year later, on April 24, 2007, he wrote in his journal, travel to SD for dental work and medical lap band fill. She thought it was weird he was getting gastric bypass as he was a skinny fella anyway. Maureen theorized that he did it so he could gain time while killing without the pesky distraction of hunger, along with plastic surgery to change his appearance. Interesting. <laughs> In the case of Holly Bobo, Zach Adams, one of the alleged killers, is still appealing his conviction. So nothing really new in that case. But one thing I want to bring up is a video sent to me by uh, Angela Chapman. 
thank you. So this video, Mysterious Scream, Natchez Trace, Tennessee, was filmed in, uh, well, Natchez Trace. This was filmed in 2011, he says in the description, which could have been around the same time she was taken, and it's not far from where she was abducted. Probably a wild animal, though after listening to it for a while there sounds something human to the screams. But who knows. I thought it was kind of interesting anyway that this guy's hearing screams not far from where Holly probably was killed and in the same uh, time frame. Just thought it was something interesting. The McStay family, the entire family, were murdered, so says the jury, by Chase Merritt. He was found guilty and they recommended he be sentenced to death. His sentencing will take place in December. We the jury in the above entitled action find the defendant, Charles Ray Merritt, guilty of the offense of murder in the first degree. You can hear right there some audible gasps going through the courtroom. Merritt's family was there as well. This was not what they wanted to hear, but for the McStays, it's something they've been waiting for for a long time. The prosecution was able to convince the jury that Charles Merritt was guilty without a reasonable doubt. Jurors debated over this for several days. The bodies of the McStay family, they, they vanished nine years ago. Six years later, we are finally starting to get some closure here. Charles so Samuel Little, America's worst serial killer, and it sure darn seems like it. He's, uh, he was really going for gold there. He has confessed to 93 murders, and the FBI are pretty sure he ain't spoofing. And he was even kind enough to draw pictures of his victims, and was dying to tell investigators all about his killing. Let's take a look. And she was about five, she was about tall, she was tall for a woman, mm -hmm. about five, eight, five, nine, and it's a beautiful shape, and uh, she's friendly. I grabbed her by the legs and pulled her to the water. Mm -hmm. That's the only one that I ever killed by drowning. Love traveling and killing this guy, and quite the artiste. Why do I have the feeling those pictures are going to end up on eBay someday? The infamous Dyatlov Pass incident. Uh, the Russians recently reopened an investigation into what happened, which is pretty interesting. To date, still no one knows why those hikers ran out of their tents in the middle of the night on the side of a mountain wearing fuck all. There have been countless theories, some more plausible than others. The investigation is still ongoing, so it'll be interesting if they get to the bottom of it. Now we move on to Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, killers of Lucas Fowler, China Deese, and Leonard Dyke. They went on the run and were last reported to be in the Gillam, Manitoba area, hiding out in the woods. On the 2nd of August 2019, a local reported to the police that he had seen a blue sleeping bag at the edge of the Nelson River, near where it enters Hudson Bay. Searching the area, the RCMP found a damaged rowboat, and they also found items belonging to the two lads. Then, a few days later, the two bodies were found in a brush area about a kilometre away from the boat. It seems they'd killed themselves via gunshot. Cam shot Briar before turning the gun on himself. They were on a suicide mission, and it seems to have ended that way. There's no indication that these were, were planned or predicted. Digital camera to record six chilling videos. In the first video, they take responsibility for all of the killings. They also talk about plans to march to Hudson's Bay, hijack a boat, and then travel to either Europe or Africa. In another, they talk about how they want to turn around and kill more people, how they expect to be dead themselves within a week. And in that final video, they talk about how cornered they feel and explain a suicide pact and their wishes to be cremated. They were cold, they were remorseless, um, matter of fact. It is believed that McLeod shot Schmigelski before shooting himself. 
So that's really the end of that. We will never know, I guess, why they did what they did. Though who knows why killers do what they do. Because they suck, that's why. And finally, we're going to talk briefly about the abduction of Jody Hughes and Trude, which I just covered the other week. John Van Seis has been a key suspect, but it seems the main person of interest in the disappearance of Jody Hoosentrude will likely not return to Iowa. About a year ago, John Van Seis was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and his memory has severely deteriorated. Apparently, the decline is 12 times that of what is normal. So whether or not John knows more about what happened to Jody than he ever said, honestly, it looks like we may never know. He probably doesn't even remember Jody himself. And there goes a key suspect. Uh, in the video I made about Jody, um, talked about how there were search warrants for his cars, but it seems like that's nothing more is going to come of that. Now that's all the cases I really have updates on. Unfortunately, I was really hoping for more cases, like a, an update on D.D. or Kun's case. Over the summer, authorities said they were onto something, but but it seems like nothing. The cases of Natalie Holloway. Amy Lynn Bradley, Emma Filipoff, Lauren Spear, Missy Bevers, Lars Matank, Trevor Dealey, Amber Tuckerow, Lisk, Zeb Quinn, and so many others remain unsolved, sadly. If more updates come out about these unsolved cases, I'll make another update video. But for now, that's all we really have. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away, and I will see you as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.